Part of navigating through life is figuring out how to use our voice strategically, meaning how can we use our voice to get what we want, to express our opinions, or to simply get things done. But the problem is, a lot of us focus more on what we want to say versus how we should say it, meaning a lot of us just first speak, wait for others to react, and then we tailor our message. In fact, that should be flipped. We should be focusing on how we want to tailor our message first, and then we speak. No wonder so many of us get frustrated in not getting our ideas heard. Now, in order to be a strategic communicator, there are three things we want to focus on, and we call this the SCP, the Strategic Communications Path. And following this path is key in using your voice as an asset. The three elements are number one, is focusing on creating the environment you want. The second is figuring out what role you want to play. And the third is figuring out your energy level. When you focus on these three things, you are approaching communications in a strategic way. Some of the best communicators out there are really good at creating the environment they want when they are engaging in conversations. And the different environments can be a warm environment, meaning you really want everyone around you to feel comfortable in expressing yourselves. Or you're trying to create an environment that is more serious because you guys are about to tackle a serious conversation. As a strategic communicator, this is absolutely in your control. Once you've identified the environment you want to create for others around you, the next thing to think about is the role you want to play, meaning what is your value add? What is one bit of information you know more than everyone else in that room? That is the information and role you're going to play in that environment. And depending on that environment, your role can change as well, meaning one time your role can be the motivator in the group, or maybe you can be the data person. Or perhaps your role can simply be you just contributing into additional information. But once you have your role established, the next thing you want to think about is your energy level. This is really important because depending on the energy level you bring, that can really shape the type of conversation you're going to have. And that means your energy level can be high intentionally. And this is really good when you are trying to engage and motivate the group. Or if you want a more medium energy level, this is more if you want to get a level headed conversation going. Or if your energy level is low, this is good when you're trying to convey a more serious conversation. And this is where the tone of voice is really important. But the key here is if you want to be a strategic communicator and use your voice as an asset, you want to think about the SCP, the strategic communications path, and the environment, the role, and the energy you're bringing into every conversation that you're having. When you step into a meeting, whether it's with one person or with a group of people, how effectively you communicate largely dictates the direction of that meeting. Yes, you have the power to do that. But for many of us, the thought of speaking up in a meeting can be crippling. I get it. You just don't know how your message or your thought is going to be perceived or received. So let's talk about how you can begin to prepare yourself to speak up in a meeting. There are a few things to think about. The first thing you want to consider is mentally preparing yourself to speak up and getting rid of the idea that you need to be validated once you express your idea. Meaning, if there is silence after you share your idea, that is okay. In fact, in a lot of video remote work, when you're in a virtual room with many other people, after you speak up, there may be silence, but it is okay, and that shouldn't deter you from sharing your ideas. The next thing with mentally preparing yourself is to actually challenge yourself to do it. So, telling yourself, hey, I gotta say at least one thing in the meeting. In fact, the earlier on you speak up in a meeting, the easier it's going to be because chances are if you wait too long, you might convince yourself to not do it at all. If creating bullet points will help you prepare your message, then certainly do that as well. 
The next thing you want to think about is your value add, meaning what role do you want to play in this meeting? And you can figure out your value add by identifying what is one thing or one insight you know that other people in the meeting may not know. And that is something that you can share in the meeting when you speak up. The third way for you to speak up in a meeting and to do it in a less direct way is perhaps posing your thought as a question. For example, if you're in a meeting and you're sensing that the conversation is going in one direction, but you don't necessarily agree with that, you can speak up and pose it as a question by saying, hey guys, I know we are talking about plan A, but here are some of my concerns and maybe we can consider plan B. What do you all think? By posing it as a question, you are being less forceful and less direct, but you are still expressing your idea. In the end, speaking up in a meeting is really important for you to get the recognition you deserve. Figuring out your talking points, your value add, and even posing your thoughts as a question, these are great ways for you to start thinking about how you can effectively speak up in a meeting. Your boss schedules a meeting with you and immediately your heart starts pounding. What do they want to talk about? What did I do wrong? These are really natural things that may run through your mind. But being able to confidently communicate to your boss is really important in how they perceive you. So you just want to remember a few things when you start to get nervous thinking about having to talk with your boss. The first thing is you have to remember they're humans. They're just like us. They have likes, they have quirks, they have dislikes. So just remembering that can help ease some of that anxiety when speaking with them. The second thing is, you may be walking into a meeting and you're afraid that they may be giving you constructive feedback and that may be hard to hear and digest. But you just have to think about it, that they're trying to help improve you so that you can be a better and more efficient worker. Now that you're about to approach that conversation with your boss, you want to figure out how you can communicate on their level. And this is what I call the four power pillars and being able to identify what they are with your boss. So the first thing you want to consider is what is your boss's communication style and preference? Meaning, do they prefer shorter emails, emails that are more concise? Or do they prefer emails with a lot more context and information? Whatever it is that they like, you want to tailor your message to that. The second thing you want to think about is offering solutions and not just problems. Meaning, if you're working on something and you are starting to sense that you are going to be hitting a wall soon or you really don't know how to tackle this problem, instead of just saying, hey, I have this problem, can you help me? Try to take a few steps back and think, okay, how can I solve this problem first and perhaps offer options and then present it to your boss? Being able to do that not only shows you being proactive, but it also shows your critical thinking skills. And number three, no surprises. Meaning you don't want your boss finding out information from someone else when it has to do with you. For example, let's say you're working on a project or you're given information that they don't know about yet. Instead of just throwing that information at them and just saying a quick FYI, summing it up in a high level sentence or two can really go a long way. Or better yet, putting it all in one email so you don't inundate their inbox. Or number four, say their name. I know it sounds kind of strange, but if you're able to say your boss's name when you're engaging in conversation with them, it not only shows your comfort level, but it also shows your presence around them. For example, if you're seeing your boss, you can say, hey Ken, really good to see you. Or that's a really great idea, Ken. Have you also thought about this? There's something about saying someone's name as you're engaging in conversation with them that not only shows you're comfortable, but that you're confident. When you're communicating with your boss, it certainly can be nerve wracking and you can certainly feel anxious about it. But just reminding yourself that, hey, they're just like us and remembering the four power pillars and how you approach communicating with them, it can not only make you feel more confident, but more comfortable.